Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great. And for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. So today we are continuing on with our VGC Series 10 content. We've got another great rental team to feature on the channel today. And again, from a very good friend of mine from Stewie, has provided a number of rental codes that we featured recently. And again, he's been kind enough to share this one with us today. And it kind of helps us cover a lot of bases with Pokemon that we'd like to feature at the minute. And today you can see the team is based all around Eternity. So this Eternatus is slightly different from the one that we featured earlier on in Series 10 with that Cosmic Power. This one a bit more offensive with the Power Herb and that Meteor Beam that has access to to kind of get that special attack boost and then start doing some big damage to the team. We've got a support and cast of Celesteela there. Uh, it is going to be your kind of seed uh, variant with Sub, Heavy Slam. Uh, it can win games by itself, it, honestly, if it's in the right conditions. Then you've got the kind of the standard twin duo of series 10 what they'll always be remembered for of Rillaboom and Incineroar providing that double fake out support intimidate and so on uh, and then we've got double genies on the end which I do really like you've got the Landorus incarnate we've all seen how well this is performing in series 10 and then kind of pairing up with its other genie counterpart the Thunderous incarnate which has got that prankster ability has got a lot of support options as well with scary face eerie impulse speed control and just a really nice way for being able to kind of dismantle um, and disrupt an opposing side of the field, especially the special attackers. Gives you a nice way to kind of shut down Xerneas as well if they are able to kind of get set up. Uh, so this is the team in a nutshell. There's the rental code. If you'd like to try it out for yourself, Stu managed to get to the top 50 in the ranked ladder last season, so or last series. It performed extremely well. It's a very solid team, and hopefully we can do it just as today. We'll have a couple of games of the team as we always do, and then we'll round off with the rental code at the end of the episode. I want to just before we get into today's episode I want to give a big shout out to everyone that has provided rental cards to feature on the channel we've got a bunch of them that we'll be going through this week in into next week and again just a reminder if you have got rental team that you'd like to see featured don't even hesitate just drop it down in the comment section below and I'll make sure to get round to it at some point we've still got a few weeks left of series 10 before we jump into the next rule set whatever that will be um, and as soon as that news is announced I will cover it here on the channel still make sure that you are subscribed I don't generally see say this subscribe hit the notification bell and all that jazz so you don't miss that video and update when it does drop but without further ado friends let's get into the first game of today's episode okay first up today we have a tornadoes reshiram Reggie Alecki, Urshifu, Stack Attacker, and Indeedee team. Quite an interesting team, obviously with the Reshiram, it's not kind of very commonly played, uh, but got a lot of support and options around it. We've got Tailwind from the Tornadus, got to watch out for that, and then you've got a Trick Room mode with the Stack Attacker. Primarily going to have the Indeedee as support in that mode of the team. And then you've got Reggie Alecki, which gives the team a general bit of support. It's a very fast Pokemon uh, with Electro Web can provide speed control additionally on top of stack attacker and tornadoes so i think if we lead with something like incineroar eternatus um let's bring rillaboom and i think we'll round off with celesteela here it might be a mistake not bring the genies because i think thunderous could be quite good but at the same time i feel like celesteela if we can remove things like regilekian and reshiram early on then then celesteela can do a decent enough job to clean up the rest of the team and kind of helps wall something like uh, Stack Attack, especially if we can get the Leech Seed onto it, which could be a little bit of a more problematic Pokemon. So, we do see Tornadus and Aleki as a lead. What are the options for my opponent here? We've got uh, Electro Web, of course, uh, from the Aleki. It's probably going to Volt Switch out, though. Uh, it's not really going to do very much damage to Eternatus because we've got the Park Dragon type in. I think the big thing here would be if we can remove the Tornadus. Like, I'm more inclined to fake out into the Tornadus and just double d go, go into that slot, to be honest. Because um, I'm not really worried too much about the Aleki, if I'm, I'm completely honest. And if we can get that Meteor Beam off right now, that puts us so far ahead in this match. And it prevents the Tailwind going up as well, which I think my opponent probably needs for the, the Reshiram to, to kind of function as well as, as they want it to. They do have Electro Web that they can rely on here. Is a form of speed control. It's like a backup, um, but with with the fake out from Incineroar to kind of pivot in and out when we want, uh, we might might be all right. So let's see. Reshiram coming onto the field. Are they just going straight for this Tailwind here? Can we catch it? Because if we can, yeah, we are. We're gonna get it. We're gonna get rid of this Tailwind, and we're gonna get the boost. 
here we go meteor beam kicking off the channel in style today i like the um i like the power herb meteor beam combination on eternatus it gives you like eternatus is bulky anyway it's got really good speed stat um so the additional kind of attack boost that you get through this through this combination is really 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 useful because you kind of don't need to rely too much now on something like meteor beam um what we need to be careful of is obviously the regieleki coming in it's gone for an electro web uh and and uh, putting eternatus in harm's way from that reshiram so i think we'll just drop a protect here and then we'll just switch into rillaboom it's unlikely that the reshiram goes for um An attack like a fire attack into in, into Incineroar. I mean, the the god level read here would be be be. Uh, I I would just accept it. I would just accept it if the, if they do go for um, a blue flare into uh, Rillaboom. To be honest, I think they go after Eternatus. There's the Electro Web. Yeah. Yeah. Um. They get the speed drop on Rillaboom and the Earth Power. Okay, so they're going for that. So maybe they don't have Dragon coverage. So I think the thing here is to make sure that we stop that speed control on the Reggie Aleki here. And um, we could double up into that slot, definitely. But what I'm going to do is just Dynamax Cannon into the Rush Room. We should outspeed it and just go for that fake out into the Aleki. Then the next turn, what we've got is the Grassy Glide. Uh, we can go for into the Aleki and you might be thinking here well should we fake out into the Reshiram well not really because we're kind of checking the Reshiram anyway with our Eternatus so we kind of got that protection for Rillaboom anyway the biggest threat to us right now is what we've been talking about is that Electro Web Speed Control that my opponent's going to try and utilize now now like I say there is the the option where we could kind of double into the Yaleki, but then we leave ourselves a little bit open um, against the Reshiram uh, if we don't attack into it. And like we see here, it just goes for an attack. So we're better off covering bases um, and just taking the sensible play here. Um, it is actually shown as... Is that a... It actually survived that. No way. No way. Wow. That might be an Assault Vest Rush Room. I would imagine it probably is. Uh, but, you know, a fake out's going to be enough to take it down this next turn. We've got Incineroar to come in with that double fake out. Just goes to show as well, it has to... <clears throat> let's say it has to be Assault Vest. There's no way Rush Room would be able to take uh, a Dynamax Cannon plus one any other way. Any other way. No way. No way. So, we've got the fake out into the Rush Room. We know it's Assault Vest. It's either going to switch out... Um, I mean, the thing is, it could switch out here, right? The Aleki could go for something like um, Electro Web again. But I don't know. I don't know. Is my opponent going to do that? Or are they just going to keep it in? Because there's the option where we just go Dynamax Cannon into the Rush Room again. And then we go Fake Out into the Reggie Aleki. It's probably the safer play because then we don't get caught by them switching out going for the electro web switching the rush around back in and then we're in a little bit of a more tricky spot with the eternatus where we have to switch out we have to move pokemon around adjust our board position reset the speed drop and then that by doing that it can give my opponent the opportunity whereas if we just make this safe play here it means if the rush room does switch out whatever comes in is going to take a dynamax cannon take some big damage and then at least we've got the protect next turn switch out incineral bring in celesteela and then we can deal with whatever but it's kind of not worked out like that so we just see the urshifu come in now uh we're probably going to see the electro web and a wicked blow um but we should be able to to take that um it's still not over because we got we do have some big threats on the field of course um let's just check this urshifu Ooh, it's a it's the water one. It's the water. It's the water one. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll just go for Aleki. And then we'll switch in Celesteela here. Because I still think we see Electro Web. But Incineroar... Coming back in with the, the fake out is going to be quite useful. We might end up losing it here if the, the Yoshifu decides to go for the, um, the Surgeon Strike into the, uh, the, the Incineroar. And then we do take that Electro Web. We can't get rid of that here. But knowing that it's not the Dark type, it hasn't got the Wicked Blow. We aren't really as pressured with Eternatus here as we would have been before. You do see that Surgeon Strikes come out into 
Oh, it's into oh, Eternatus. That's interesting. Uh, part dragon type in here going to be saving our bacon, really. It does respectable damage, but nothing to really worry about as we can get the sludge bomb into Regieleki here. That is going to be enough to take it down. Um, and like I say, we can just double up this next turn into to Urshifu, and it should be enough. The, the Cloud Combat is not going to be doing anywhere near enough damage to Eternatus to take us down. And we know the Surgeon Strike damage is, uh, is negligible as well. So Celesteela might get knocked out here. We'll just go for a Sludge Bomb and we'll go for a Heavy Slam. And that should wrap it up. Although we may need to get... We may lose Celesteela here, take the Urshifu down to its Sash and then we'll have to get the uh, the Incineroar in for the Fake Out. Yeah, I don't know if we'll take... I don't know if Celesteela might take... Nah, 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 we're not taking this. No. No. No, 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 no. Very close, though. Very close. Very close. <coughs> but, yeah. And no sash, so that wraps it up there. So, yeah. We kind of worry sometimes, does it have the sash? Does it not have the sash? But uh, we do pick up a win to kick us off with today. So, uh, very nice game for us to start with and good game to our opponent and with that friends we will jump into game number two all right next up we have a shadow rider calyrex and min shao a tapu finny indeedy incinero and rillaboom so we've got a shadow rider calyrex team we haven't faced one of these on the channel for a little while now got the combination of mine shao and um obviously that combination is pretty pretty deadly is the Calyrex Scarf, is it Specs? Uh, they've got really good support options. Um, and indeed, with the Follow Me, the Psychic Terrain there. And then you've got the Mind Share as well, which we can't fake out, unfortunately. Uh, I think we're going to need Rillaboom in the back to at least get rid of the Psychic Terrain or the Missy Terrain if it does come up. I think we're going to need Incineroar as well, but we need to be very careful with Incineroar here because uh, the one thing that we can't do is intimidate that Mean Shao. So I think what we'll do is go Thunderous. Um, Tinnitus, Incineroar, and Rillaboom. Yeah. We've got to watch out for, I think the big thing to watch out for, like turn one, is is the feint from the Mind Shell. Because as we haven't got Fake Out, you know, they they can, e they can easily just go feint and, you know, big attack. And that would be pretty bad for what you know our two lead pokemon and thunderous and um and eternatus the thing that would worry me is that double protect is pretty obvious the other option is we don't double protect at all go for that feint play although we are seeing indeedy and calyrex so no fake out which makes me feel a little bit better i guess um we want to try and get the Eerie Impulse onto the Calyrex, but at the same time, we've got... We really do have to worry about the, the Ndidi. Um, and one thing we could potentially do is just switch into Rillaboom from Thunderous, because if we got Eerie Impulse into the Calyrex, it's likely that the Ndidi is going to go follow me here anyway, just to kind of give that extra bit of protection. If we get Rillaboom in, and protect Eternatus here. We get rid of that expanding force threat. Um, and we have fake out that we can utilize the next turn, which makes things a little bit easier for us, I guess. And we still have Incineroar that we can bring in, you know, um, for Eternatus if we do really uh, worry about the, the expanding force coming out the next turn, if that's if that's what they've got. But uh, we get Boom onto the field anyway. We're just going to see Astral Barrage, I think. Oh, Substitute. Okay. That's not too bad. Uh, it's not too bad. It's not too great either, to be honest. I think what we'll have to do is get Eternatus off the field. We don't really want to risk too much damage to it. We can go for a Grassy Glide into Calyrex. If... The problem is here, though. Hmm. We can fake out. I think what we could potentially do is... Ah, it's annoying because I really want to... Yeah, I think we have to get... Okay. Let's do... Let's do... Let's do this. Let's go U-turn into Ndidi and let's bring Incineroar in because we've got Snarl so we can hit behind that sub with Incineroar. And we've got the ability to get Eternatus back onto the field in that Rillaboom slot. If we want, all we could get maybe... 
Yeah, we get the Roller Boom back in, I think. Because then we've got the Grassy Glide or the Wood Hammer that we can hit into that and DD with. Um, because we really need to get rid of that before we do anything else. So there's a follow me, yeah. Astral Barrage, maybe. Expanding Force, potentially. Are they going after the Eternatus? Astral Barrage, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Just want to get damage onto the field, I think, from my opponent. Yeah, I miss not having a Soul Vest on Boom because, you know, they are Life Orb as well. Okay, well. This isn't too bad here, to be honest. Now we've got the Incineroar onto the field. We can get Eternatus back in. Um, and we've got Rillaboom in the back, which is the main thing, you know. If they switch out and Didi. Um, then at least we've got our terrain in the back to kind of come in and help us out. So, yeah. And two Snarls should get rid of that Carex. Should, should do. They're just going to Astral Barrage though, so I mean we get the Snarl off first because we want to take less damage on Eternatus, full stop. And we'll just go for a Snarl here. But you can see my opponent's made it difficult from the start with just having the inclusion of the main shower in, in that team preview. It makes you kind of hesitate about leading with Incineroar in that situation because they lead the main shower. It's like you've got to switch out the Incineroar or take a close combat and lose it and by switching out Incineroar first turn it kind of gives the Calyrex that free turn to hit an Astral Barrage or get a sub up um, so whatever way we kind of look at it we're, we're not in a great spot so we have to kind of try and maneuver our board positions around to a point where we are able to um, to at least take advantage of what we've got on the like make a better position for us um for what's out in front of us but we see the help in hand from indeedy expanding force coming out into the eternatus so giving us a kind of a free turn here to get this snarl off like i say we'll hit behind the sub do nice damage maybe another one not going to be quite enough but at the same time we're weakening them um so it's not really too much of an issue don't need to worry about the sub as well being or getting rid of it you know in any case they can go for another helping hand this turn, but I think it might be better. Like, let's have a quick recap of their team. Is it going to be better to get something like Thunderous in now, just to take that 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 big damage? Uh, because it still will be big damage. Yeah, I think I think what we'll do is switch in Thunderous here. We do have the uh, Citrus Berry as well, and we'll just go for another Snarl. Now we could see my opponent just switch things up here, take the Calyrex out. Uh, or maybe protect, bring something like me and Xiao in. And then they lose, they do lose the ability to uh, have the redirection on the field. Although it's not really doing them much good at this point in time, is it? So let's see where they go with this one. Ah, oh, Calyrex. I haven't played it for such a long time. It's still such a scary Pokemon, isn't it? It's still so scary. Like Astral Barrage is such a busted move. It's so broken. Just seeing it stay on the field, going for the helping hand, expand force again, I would imagine. That's what we'll see. Um, yeah. But Thunder should be able to take this. It'll just knock us down into our Citrus Berry. Yeah. Get that health back. And then I, we'll take it down now because of that, that recoil damage. Uh, but we miss. We miss it. We miss... Oh, are you absolutely kidding? Are you kidding? I hit. Ah, that's annoying. That is frustrating. That is very frustrating because we would have got it there. So they're gonna get, they've got another lifeline. They've got another opportunity to uh, get another attack off, which is a little bit frustrating for us. Uh, Cause we would have been, I feel on the home stretch by now, but they're not switching or anything. And I, I've said this now, I think they'll switch now. <laughs> they'll switch now. They'll realize that they can get an attack off, but they're not really gonna get much advantage going forward. So they may switch, they may not as well. They may wanna just get this last bit of damage off with the Calyrex. Who knows? But we're going to get the Protect off, so Thunderous is going to stick around another turn. Uh, just another helping hand, just wants to get uh, as much damage onto the field as possible with Calyrex. So we see an Astral Barrage. It's not really going to do too much to Incineroar, though. Minus two at the minute. All we need, all we need is this Snarl to hit. Come on, Incineroar. Put your specs on. Let's hit this Snarl and then we can start wrapping this game up. Because once a Calyrex is kind of removed from the field, we hit. That's good. Once a Calyrex is gone, indeed he's minus three at this point. It's not really putting any sort of pressure on. Once we get Eternatus back onto the field, 
it's, we're going to have a bit of a, a field day, I feel. So that's the big threat to Eternatus gone. My opponent's made it a lot easier for us than um, what it probably should have been, to be honest. But we'll take it. And you know, it's dangerous. These situations are dangerous where you kind of like may get to the point of like second guessing yourself. And you've seen me do it like in this series many times where we'll second guess what our opponent's going to do thinking they're, they're cornered. They have to make they have to make a decision here. Are they going to lose that Pokemon? And then they don't end up making that decision and um, it doesn't go too well for them. So we'll go for a Thunderbolt into the Ian Charl. Maybe we could just switch into Eternatus here, to be honest. Um, they're going to close combat anyway, I think, into Incineroar. Um, just gives us fake out support. Just so, I, uh, yeah, because I mean, the Indeedee at this point, like we've already said, it's minus three. It hasn't got the Psychic Terrain up, so they're not going to go for Expanding Force into Incineroar. They may go fake out into Thunderous, but I very much doubt they do. I think they'll just go straight for that close combat. Yeah, and Eternity is taking that pretty well. Puts them down to minus one. We're not seeing the redirect here, so this Thunderbolt's probably going to take the Mune Shower down to its Sash. Which is good, so Fake Out will be able to deal with it. Oh, Eternatus, we're going to be able to outspeed at the next turn anyway. Expanding Force coming out into the Thunderous, but like I said, oh, they're doubling in, predicting the switch. Nice, it's a nice play, it covers bases, it covers bases pretty nicely. Um, what we'll do, go for that. Uh, no, we'll go Thunderbolt into Inchow, and we'll go for Meteor Beam into DD, because I think they'll, they'll maybe follow me here, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. It feels pretty difficult for my opponent to come back into this one now. And they're switching the DD out. What comes in? Boom Boom. Okay, well, yeah, Boom's going to have a really difficult job against uh, Eternatus. I wonder how much this um, Meteor Beam's going to do as well. Meteor Beam. Plus one. Get this power herb activated. Like I say, I really love the combination. I really do love the combination here. Eternatus is such... I think, you know, it's, I think, really underrated. I think it's a lot better of a Pokemon um, than the usage stats kind of show. we have seen the knockoff, but both our items are now being used. Uh, we'll be able to pick up the knockout onto the Mune Shell. Um, and that forces Ndidi back onto the field, so overwriting the grassy terrain. Um... <clears throat> but we've got our own Rillaboom we can switch in this next turn. Uh, just do that Sludge Bomb into the DD and then uh, the Boom can be dealt with after that. I guess we do have to worry about the um, the Rillaboom. I mean, we're probably actually better off here just switching in Incineroar for... Because they could, like, the Rillaboom could have the straightest of attacks. Something like uh, High Horsepower, which we don't really want to have to deal with. We'll go for the Sludge Bomb into the DD. That should be enough to get that. Um, and then if it does... If Rillaboom somehow, some and um, some alternative universe has high horsepower, the minus one, the Intimidate here, will be very helpful for Eternatus just to allow us to have a little bit of room to take this uh, and get that Sludge Bomb the next turn. Um, keeping the Cyclic Trains a, a better idea, to be honest, because then we're not allowing the, the Rillaboom to get those priority attacks in. So yeah, there's the Sludge Bomb. This will be enough to get the DD plus one. And Wood Hammer. Big old hammer. Hammer time. Not doing much at all, um, unfortunately. Resisted. Double resisted. Uh, and no Grassy Terrain boost. And now uh, we've got the Fake Out and the Sludge Bomb, which will lock this game up. And uh, the team, I have to say has performed incredibly well today. Very well put together team, again, by Stu. So if you do try it out, let me know down in the comment section below. I always love to hear your thoughts on the team that we feature on the channel. And uh, a big shout out to Stu and a uh, very good game to our last opponent. So that's our two games for today's episode. We'll finish up now. We'll jump over and uh, remind you all of today's rental card. Okay, friends, here is today's rental card. Again, a big shout out to Stu for the team. And as you can see, just to recap, we got the Eternatus, the Celesteela. Unfortunately, didn't really get to see 
too much of that today. Got the Rillaboom, the Incineroar, the Landorus, again, another one we didn't see too much of, and the Thunderous. But the team performed extremely well against two big archetypes today, which was nice to kind of play against. Well, I guess the Reshiram's not a big archetype, but it's an interesting pick nonetheless, and one that I do think has a lot more threats uh, against, a, you know, it's a big threatening Pokemon in the format, and I think it probably doesn't get as uh, kind of earmarked as that as enough. So uh, the team performed extremely well. Hope at the end of the day, though, between all my rabbling, that you've enjoyed today's episode and you've enjoyed the games. And if you try the team out, you have a blast with it. So we'll wrap it up there, friends. We'll be back very soon with more content on the Channel Series 10 stuff. So keep an eye out for that. And uh, until then, take care of yourselves, more importantly than anything. And I will catch up with you all very soon. So until then, friends, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.